When coronavirus swept into Kern County, it is clear now that we underestimated its power. Despite urgent warnings from health officials, we actually helped the virus spread by gathering in groups and empowering an enemy that has so far taken over 1,400 people from our communities. We think we know how deadly coronavirus is, but it may be even deadlier than what's officially being reported. That's why our Alex Fisher dedicated months to finding out how this virus targeted our community. For 16 months, he has watched the pandemic rip through our county, carefully tracking how it's made its inconspicuous move from person to person. A year ago, he started fighting for access to vital statistics records. He got them and spent months analyzing the 8,000 death certificates filed in the first year of the COVID pandemic. And as we move into now a third wave of surging infections, hundreds of families are still grieving and wondering what life would be like if everyone understood the severity and the gravity of COVID-19. Coronavirus was bloodthirsty as it preyed on our most vulnerable residents. For months, our health officials were like air raid sirens during a war, warning that COVID-19 was coming and it would show no mercy. We had time to practice and perfect the guidelines to save lives. Kern County didn't listen and the virus emerged victorious like an enemy on the battlefield. Like an attack we knew was coming and hundreds died, families were torn apart. And the numbers show many people may have died because of the virus and what's being reported. These were Kern's deadliest days, and people are still dying. Dodgers have won it all in 2020! There was a lot to celebrate in 2020 for Daniel Miranda. He was ecstatic, especially when it was both LA teams that he roots for. Like, the Lakers had, you know, won, and then right after that, the Dodgers came and did it. Like, you know, it's, it was a good year for him when, when, when it came to sports. Two months later, coronavirus snuck into Miranda's home like an unwelcome intruder. The outcome was deadly. Coronavirus hit Kern County like a once in a century storm. I've never seen the amount of devastation. Our first case was confirmed in mid-March. Two weeks later, our first death. It would be the start of an unimaginable challenge to our healthcare system. I've never seen destruction like this. The damage that it does to their lungs and vascular system, it's, it's incredible. More than 8,000 people died in Kern County from all causes during the pandemic. Here are their death certificates. Each one describes in clinical scientific terms how a human life ended. People died from suicide, homicide, car crashes, drug overdoses, but COVID-19 was the leading cause of death in Kern County. It even beat cancer. One in six death certificates in these two piles represents a COVID death. Through the California Public Records Act, we requested every death certificate during the first year of the pandemic. We also collected statistics on the total number of deaths over each of the past five years. What we found shows ebbs and flows every year. 2020 was no different at first, but as soon as coronavirus made an unwelcome entrance into our community, the trends changed. By the end of the year, total deaths were up 21% from the year prior. COVID was to blame. Probably the biggest thing that stands out is how severely we can be affected and how quickly. Prior to 2020, our deadliest August over the past five years was 2018 when 488 people died. In August 2020, 728 people died. 154 were coronavirus deaths. At the end of the summer, the virus loosened its grip and it seemed the worst had passed. But health officials continued sounding the alarm. This is a real threat to our community. COVID is a fraud! Kern didn't listen. People proudly defied the guidelines, urging them to stay home and slow the spread. Some mocked the severity of the virus, saying COVID-19 was no worse than the flu. They were wrong. We should learn from the past. Then, as medical experts predicted, coronavirus returned, and with vengeance. It preyed on our community and readied its attack and unleashed its fury. While families were preparing Thanksgiving turkeys, nurses were preparing extra hospital beds. Sure enough, a week after the holiday, a spike in cases. The worst day, December 9th, 13 days after Thanksgiving, a whopping 1,479 people tested positive for the virus. From asymptomatic cases to fatalities, the virus jumped from person to person. 
the deadliest days would soon arrive. We in the ICU and in the hospital, as nurses, we were sitting there watching. We had those dates like marked on our calendars. We're like, these are the days we're gonna start to get busy because hospitalizations tend to peak about 10 days after the patient gets tests positive for coronavirus. The virus's winter reign of terror lasted more than two months. The worst day, December 30th, when 20 people died from COVID-19. By mid-January, Kern was losing more than 90 lives a week to the virus. And just seeing the kids watching their father as he's taking his last breath. And the mom is sitting in the room crying, telling him your dad's dying. I still remember that night. You know, not being able to be with your loved one, um, that's, I think, was the most heartbreaking. Most of the deaths were, you know, me holding a hand, the families on FaceTime, saying goodbye, sometimes to patients, telling their children goodbye. Um, they've had a great life, you know. That's hard. The Miranda family knows that pain too well. Although they tried to do everything right, COVID entered their home in December, an unwelcome holiday visitor. You know, my dad played all the right rules. But as the cold winter days persisted, the family kept their heater on and the virus spread through the air vents. Daniel tested positive Christmas Eve. By New Year's, he was in the hospital. It's just so shocking to see your dad the one person who's supposed to be the strong one, who's supposed to be there for you, who takes care of you, and he just, he's just helpless and you can't take care of him. Since visitors weren't allowed to wait in the hospital room, the family sat outside and waited. And I would just wait outside his window. I'd pull a chair up with the blanket and just sit underneath his window waiting for him to come home. On January 10th, the family received a phone call from the doctors. Daniel didn't make it, and his family wasn't able to be there when he passed. He had to say goodbye through a glass. I wanted to go across his face. I wanted him to kiss his lips. It's a group effort. You know, we could be as safe as we were. We were, we were as safe as can be, but because someone who wasn't as safe came into contact with us, unfortunately, it led to a, a domino effect that, that ended in, in someone else being taken from it. Before the pandemic, about 16 people died each day in Kern County over the past five years. Coronavirus caused that number to go up to an average of 23 daily deaths. The data we collected showed January 2021, the peak of the pandemic, was the deadliest month in Kern County history. And I do believe that people underestimated it. Um, and by the time we underestimated it, here we are. The virus didn't just penalize the reckless or disbelieving. Since it was rapidly jumping from person to person, sometimes it still struck those who took precautions, in some cases with appalling unfairness. There is no more tragic example than that of the Longoria family. This is my, my father, Israel Sr., and this is my brother, Rolando, known as Rolo, my brother, Abel, and my youngest brother, Renee. Okay, Renee, how are the tamales? They're very excellent. Riley, how are the tamales? Israel Longoria Sr. and his wife, Juanita, both in their early 80s, were cautious, as were their five sons. They stayed close to home, and on the rare occasion, they would go out. 60-year-old Ernie Longoria was perhaps the most cautious. Masks, hand sanitizer, gloves. He took the coronavirus seriously. Then he got it. He recovered, but everyone else got sick with what turned out to be COVID-19. Everyone except the eldest, Israel Jr., a 61-year-old retired elementary school principal who stayed home. But Israel's brother, Rolando, died December 22nd, his father, December 31st, and then incredibly, his brothers, Abel and Rene, just a few hours apart on January 8th. The three brothers were all in their mid-50s. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter whether you think you're healthy or not, whether you're in shape or not. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter your political affiliation, my goodness sakes. It attacks everybody. The day the Longoria brothers died was Kern's deadliest day, exactly two weeks after Christmas and a week after New Year's. 47 people died that day 
14 died of COVID-19. We found 1,004 people died from all causes January 2021, a 77% increase from the previous January. More than a third of all deaths for the month were COVID deaths. In the first 365 days of the pandemic, 1,331 people died from the virus in Kern County. That put our yearly total above normal. But more people died during the first year of the pandemic than in previous years. And there's no clear explanation for the increase. After you take away the COVID deaths, we found an additional 631 lives lost in the first year of the pandemic. And COVID was not listed as the cause of death. We looked at every death certificate. The only causes of deaths that we found that increased during the pandemic, homicides and deadly accidents. But statistically, those increases are minimal. They don't explain the spike in non-COVID deaths. Health officials say it is possible people who contracted COVID-19 and recovered died because of the effects of the virus. Because COVID wasn't in their system at the time of their death, it's possible the virus was not necessarily listed as an immediate cause of death. There's a lot of conversation and a lot of research going into, you know, what we call COVID long haulers are the long term sequelae we see after people have recovered from that acute infection. You know, they have cleared the infection. They no longer have any virus circulating in their body, but damage has been done. Damage that isn't repairable and could cause health problems, even death years after the pandemic. That's why there's a rush to put an end to this disease. Now with the Delta variant making frightening gains and much of the county choosing not to vaccinate, Longoria is worried, worried that others like his family, those who continue to take precautions could be vulnerable again. To say that I don't believe in it, that it's a hoax after so many people that are dying, um, I'm angry at them because I believe it's them who caused my family to die. If they would have been more cautious, been more considerate, been more humane toward other humans, this wouldn't have happened. We, we could have done a whole lot better than this, but there were just uh, too many people that just thought of it as a hoax, that it, it, it was no big deal, but it is a big deal. In the first year, we found the average person who died from COVID-19 was 69 years and 357 days old. Our oldest victim was 101. The youngest victims were 19. These are the lives lost, not simple numbers. It's an uneasy feeling for families like the Mirandas to lose someone to COVID and know the virus could come back. Yeah, we have a promising outlook. Doesn't mean that it's over with and doesn't mean that the pain has gone away from those who lost people. I can't do that again. It's not. It's not something I want to do again. I don't want to see someone I love go through that. And it's not something anyone should see their loved one go through when it's so easily preventable by just getting vaccinated. And one day when the virus is no longer on our minds and we return to normal, hundreds of families will forever deal with a new normal, one they never thought would exist. I always ask God to take me first because I never wanted to feel this. My husband must have prayed a little harder. Kern's deadliest days, a number eerily defined here at the Bakersfield Fox Theater. Each empty seat representing a life lost to COVID-19. That certainly puts it in perspective. 17's Alex Fisher reporting tonight. 1,433 lives, souls stolen from us too soon by this virus. You can see some of the people we have lost behind me. We've created a section on our webpage where you can upload a picture of your loved one. It's called the Those We've Lost Gallery, and it's on our website at kget.com.